Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. We want to welcome our friends in South Africa, the United States, and around the world to this week's edition of a conversation with Al Haj Mori Salakan. I'm pleased to be your host coming to you once again through the Salah Media platform out of Johannesburg, South Africa. Salah Media is an online portal for humanitarian journalism. We don't just report the news, we advise you on what you can do about it. With that said, today's hot topic is centered around a very important tribunal that took place in New York City uh, last month. It uh, was an inter international tribunal uh, dealing with the issue of human rights and uh, the status of the United States as a country uh, theoretically predicated on liberty and justice for all. We have three very special guests, and this is one of those days, and thank goodness I don't have too many of these days, when everything that could go wrong <laughs> uh, has, has misfired. Uh, one of the most important things is that um, I cannot find the bios of our guests uh, they have just disappeared from my uh, laptop, it, it, it appears. Uh, so inshallah ta'ala, we're going to provide the detailed bios on all three of our guests later uh, when we post uh, the uh, today's broadcast for, for later viewing. We'll have the, we'll find the, the <laughs> the bios and we'll post them uh but for now what we're going to do is i'm going to uh, bring them on uh, in the law and we are going to have a discussion uh we're going to begin our discussion on the tribunal but um before we begin our discussion i'm going to have uh each one as i bring them on uh, just share a little bit about themselves uh, for the benefit of the audience uh, as a means of introduction. And again, we'll have the formal bios posted later. Uh, today's conversation, again, is on the International Tribunal. This is, was a very uh, thought-provoking tribunal that took place uh, in New York City over a, I believe it was a three-day period, but inshallah ta'ala, we're going to get into that uh, without any further ado. Uh, we want to bring on, well, before we bring on the guests, what I'd like to do is show you a little piece of video, a little piece of video that uh, touches upon issues raised around the character of the United States from a domestic viewpoint, all right, from a domestic perspective. And uh, so without any further ado, let us show that uh, three minute piece of video. The January 6th assault on the Capitol building in the United States was the most shocking day in America since September 11, 2001. It wasn't done by foreign terrorists. It was done by Americans. It was an attempted coup against democracy in the United States. Our democracy is under unprecedented assault. One person, one vote. That citizens have political equality. And of course, in the United States, as in many other parts of the world, that remains an ideal, but not a reality. What is a democracy? I don't know. I've never lived in one. America has never been a real democracy. The black people have never experienced that. It 
took almost a hundred years to realize those Civil War amendments granted because there was a pushback to the rights that were granted on the amendments. And even now, we are facing a lot of laws that try to limit or create barriers to that participation. First and foremost, not everyone has the right to vote. And of course, that disproportionately affects people of color. That's why Trump won, because we haven't done anything about racism in this country. strong borders and we will have the wall and Mexico will pay for the wall. He showed you that 70 million people in this country are racist, evil, hateful people. They raided houses of our Mexican brothers and sisters. We protested for that. I was arrested for that. Police beat me up, they damaged my spine. When you step out there and put your life on the line for black people, you are looking America in the eye and saying, I'm ready to die. My dream is that people like uh, my daughter, the young people, just have a full voice and don't feel targeted because of their race or ethnicity. Okay, there you have it. And this was just a little snippet of some of the challenges we face on the domestic level here in the United States. Um, what happened on Janu January 6th of this year was uh, really uh, uh, <laughs> an earth shattering event uh, politically uh, for not just the United States of America, but the image of America in the global community. But the, uh, the tribunal focused not just on um, what's happening in America domestically, but also America's foreign policy imprint, uh, how that has impacted folk uh, around the world. So without any further ado, I want to bring on our guests uh, for today's conversation. Um, we have a very talented sister, out of South Africa by the name of Magdalene Munsami. Uh, she is going to share some perspective on um, uh, who she is and uh, the role that she played in that very important uh, conference that took place. And we also have with us uh, a good brother and friend out of uh, New York City, Matt Myers, who's going to give us some some background on himself and the role that he played in that uh, conference. And, and then last but certainly not least, my good brother and a former political prisoner himself, Jihad Abdul Mumit. Let's begin with you, uh, Magdalene. Uh, could you first share some perspective with the audience? on, uh, well, actually a bit of background with the audience on who you are, you know, what uh, some, of, some of the things that you have accomplished and uh, the work that you do in South Africa and the role that you played in that very important uh, conference that took place a month ago in New York City. Um, First, yourself. Yes, Walaikum Salaam. Um. Alhamdulillah. I think for me, um, this is a, the video is very emotional. Uh, uh, the experiences that we share are very emotional. Uh, but as an attorney of the High Court, as an activist, um, one has to separate the emotion from the fact. 
um, I want to greet with uh, absolute respect and admire. Uh, um, Alhamdulillah, uh, my greatest and dearest friend, uh, and uh, jihad. Um, it's I'm so emotional being on the same platform. <laughs> Um, even with yourself, um, and when you speak about uh, why and how I entered into the process, um, for me, it is the most humbling experience because I think justice remains the center of what we remain uh, conscious to, alive to, and real to. Uh, we can't, uh, I, I, I uh, there was a Kyle, uh, there was an incident uh, I saw in the, and I, I can be held uh, to caution, <clears throat> of a, a Kyle's Rittison or, or something of that. Rittenhouse. Rittenhouse, who was exonerated for killing people consciously, intentionally. And I was... Uh, abhorrent. I felt uh, absolutely uh, sick to the bottom of my soul. And yet we find ourselves as black, brown and indigenous people constantly under a, a microscope and accused, unfortunately, accused because of color, accused, uh, prejudiced, and discriminated against. Now, when you ask me a question that says why, I will respond by saying, why not? Because there is no space in my mind, in my consciousness, in the consciousness of my people that have suffered the death of their children under an apartheid. The Jews celebrate the Holocaust and they make the Holocaust a representation of persecution that must be continuously acknowledged. Now we use terminology like apartheid that separates the understanding of murder, genocide and the killing consciously of black, brown and indigenous people consensually under terminology. I am not here to discriminate against any race or any form, but to say that enough is enough. The segregation, a white, what is this uh, 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 a man's name? I was devastated. This written house. What is it? Uh, remind me again, Mister. Yes, uh, our written house. Yes. Yes. Walks scot free for intentional murder. Intentional. And we simply because well we can't assume that the justice system is is inclined to the white uh, supremacist attitude we will never never sleep until the justice of black brown and indigenous people are recognized simply because there are many 
And we need to, un- you know, uh, the tribunal, let me go back to the issue of the tribunal. It wasn't a conference. Let me rec- uh, let me correct you. Yes, yes, please. It was not a conference. It was a tribunal. Mm-hmm. There were witnesses. Mm-hmm. It was a very painful exercise. Yeah. Not painful in the main uh, because of the... Uh, uh, extenuating time it was painful from the witness testimonies of a mother from a foreign country who arrived to know that her son was killed in a room and she could not get in it was witness testimonies that came from human beings that said we could not do anything to stop the police from killing our people. The issue here is that was not a conference. It was an opportunity for, and I want to acknowledge uh, the Black Panther movement without prejudice and without apology. I want to acknowledge Matt Meyer, Sekwa Odinga, Jihad, and every, I, I, I can't even put all of them into, into it, for having done what they have done. Because we heard the cries of the people who said, when the police entered a room, all they did was exit live ammunition without any question. And what I am saying is that that was not a conference. Let us dismiss. Let's not use the wrong language. Language is important in this discussion. Yes, it is. And what is significant is that nobody cared to listen to the cry of a mother. Nobody cared to listen to the cry of a person, no matter who it was. Apart from that, apart from the legal implications, are the human implications that the U.S. government has had jihad, sequa, odinga, and many other prisoners behind bars for years longer than their lives as teenagers. And in maximum security, thrown from the worst prison to the worst prison. And we sit back as citizens, not just of a a country, but as the globe. And we think that they're going to, we are, what is that? Where is the excuse and the justification and the reparation? Ours is not, my role in the tribunal is not simple. My role is to say, give them back their human, give everyone back their humanity. You cannot expect a person who has been in prison for 39 years, 33 years. You want to uh, compare the life of Nelson Mandela to the life of Sequa Adinga or Jihad. And imaginably possible simply not and we're going to say this without prejudice and this can be held against me there were privileges Mm -hmm. these were individuals who were tortured and then we expect them to enter into an integrated society as if all is well It is not well. We are not going to let the United States government get away with the prejudice, with the abuse, 
with the dehumanization that they claim under the United Nations banner that sits in Manhattan to get away with it under no circumstances. We are going to make sure that our people, black, brown, and indigenous, not going to be uh, uh, prejudiced because of who they are and what they are and what they and we are going to resuscitate the and thus i want you to place on record sir okay my we sister. are going to resuscitate the movement and we are going to take the united states of america back into the hands okay. of the black people and the oppressed thank you so much all right we're going to come back to you. Uh, let's hear from uh, Matt now. Uh, Matt, Matt, what role did you play in this process of this tribunal? And I'm glad my sister corrected me. Language is very important. It was not a conference. It was a tribunal. What role did you play in it, Matt? And what are your thoughts? What, what were your thoughts coming out of it? Thank you, dear brother, and uh, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. It is indeed an honor to be here with uh, with my dear sister, uh, and uh, and 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 brother uh, Jihad. Um, I'll do a little self introduction. Yes, uh, And uh, and in that, uh, set some some more context, uh, coming off of uh, the the passionate and strong words that my sister uh, Maggie just said. So, you know, by my name there, those little initials, IPRA, uh, that stands for the organization I represent, the International Peace Research Association. And I've been honored uh, for the last several years to serve as the Global Secretary General of uh, IPRA, International Peace Research Association, which was one of hundreds of groups uh, domestically within the U.S. and internationally to support uh, in different ways the spirit, uh, the, uh, the the international tribunal against Black, Brown, and Indigenous peoples. Uh, before that, historically, I've been an organizer and uh, author uh, for many, many years, and I, I've been blessed uh, to do work in South Africa and to do work around the continent. Uh, my first and a couple of other of my books have have been blessed uh, by Forward. Uh, and commentary by uh, Nobel laureate Archbishop Desmond Tutu. So we're aware of uh, some of the processes that South Africa and other places have gone through where we have the people themselves from the grassroots level uh, testifying uh, and presenting on their own conditions. Uh, but different than a Truth and Reconciliation Commission, uh, the idea, I think, in the U.S. context is we must first get to the truth. We're almost not ready yet, really, for reconciliation, because though there have been glorious movements that people read about around the world in terms of what's happened in the United States, and, and as Sister Maggie said, the Black Panthers were part of that movement, part of those movements, we really haven't had the kind of radical transformation and struggle that took place if just within South Africa uh, in, in, in recent memory uh, in terms of the end of political apartheid. We realize there are many problems still in South Africa, but the transformation from political apartheid uh, created a space to say uh, we can begin to talk about reconciliation and reparations. Not so, not so in the United States. So from my history as an author and activist, my history as part of this group, IPRA, I was asked to be the special advisor to a panel of jurists, an independent panel of jurists, nine uh, internationally acclaimed human rights experts, lawyers, uh, and and uh, some clergy as well. Um, and and though she didn't mention it herself, I think due to humility, uh, our dear sister Magdalene Monsami uh, was one of those nine jurists, and uh, in fact was uh, the chief jurist. And in some ways, the reason she was the chief jurist, in addition to her own 
pedigree as a former member of parliament in South Africa uh, and as a member of the high court and as someone who does mediation work with the African Union. Um, the grouping of people, especially within the U.S., and, and Brother Jihad will speak more of this in a moment, I'm sure, but the coalition grouping that came together several years ago uh, decided to call itself the Spirit of Mandela. And the Spirit of Mandela coalition called itself such because there was an understanding that there's a history and a lineage of work uh, looking at human rights abuses against U.S. Black, brown, and indigenous peoples, not the whole world, but just those within the empire, those within the 50 states, those within the U.S., being looked at from an international human rights lens, from a perspective that doesn't just look at U.S. policy, but look at what is considered to be international norms and policies for human rights. So the Mandela rules, as they're called within the United Nations structures, around the treatment of prisoners and some of the uh, transformations that we've seen uh, in South Africa and in Africa became central to the theme of this coalition. And so it was more than symbolic to have, as we saw already here, a passionate supporter from South Africa, uh, like um, you know Maggie Mumsami uh, serve as uh, as one of the jurists and as our chief jurist. And in fact, uh, I'll note before go going on to a couple of other points uh, that um, amongst uh, many of the roles that, uh, that Magdalene uh, played, she also uh, delivered uh, to us uh, a statement of solidarity and support um, from Princess Zanami uh, Mandela, from uh, Winnie and Nelson Mandela's daughter, uh, you know, who has also been an ambassador from South Africa. And so uh, there was a, a need to make that international connection. And this is one piece of the tribunal I want to highlight again before Jihad gets into some of the nitty gritty about the testimony, about the charges against the U.S. and such. It was not actually, just to be clear and to, to clarify, it was not actually a tribunal that looked at the U.S.'s many human rights issues and potential abuses and actual abuses against black, brown, indigenous peoples of the world. That's significant, that's important, but it was not the scope of this tribunal. This tribunal just looked at U.S. human rights abuses against black, brown, and indigenous peoples within the U.S., okay. within the empire, within the 50 states, and territories. But the international piece of it was this. It was saying that those in judgment of these abuses could not be from the U.S. itself. The U.S. cannot judge itself on these issues. U.S. courts and U.S. policies have to be looked at from an international human rights lens. So the judges, Maggie being one of the nine of them, were all from an international perspective, all with international pedigree and history. And, and let, me, uh, let me say this. This is not a new idea, but we stand on the shoulder of some great historical figures and giants. In particular, this tribunal was designed uh, with an understanding that in the international arena, since the 1960s, there have been literally uh, sessions called People's Tribunals or Permanent People's Tribunals. They were begun by the great uh, British philosopher Bertrand Russell around U.S. involvement in Southeast Asia and the so-called Vietnam War, which, of course, the Vietnamese called the American War. Um, but uh, looking from a, a grassroots from a non-governmental, from a people's perspective, uh, U.S. abuses uh, at that time in Southeast Asia. And so the idea of people's tribunals may not be able to legally hold the U.S. responsible. Possibly the United Nations International Criminal Court can't even do that. Nonetheless, it shifted and it helped to shift international and U.S. popular opinion such that the U.S. was required to withdraw from and pull out from those activities. 
Similarly, people's tribunals have taken place on many different topics for many decades. And in the case of black people in the US, in the case of black, brown and indigenous peoples, we also look at 70 years. We look at a, an anniversary coming up in December when in 1951, the great sociologist, essentially the, the founder of, of modern sociology, Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois, the great um, singer, sportsman, uh, intellectual, and, and political leader, Paul Robeson, William Patterson, and others came together to bring a petition to the, at that time, very new United Nations, saying, and this was their quote and their the title of their petition, saying, we charge genocide against the United States. But they did it again in the international context. It was about U.S. actions towards black people, towards African Americans, but it was in the international arena. And then, of course, we, we cannot help but recognize the great minister Malcolm X, El Hajj Malik El Shabazz, who at the end of his life, as he developed, as he deepened, as his internationalism became more profound, as he traveled around Africa and the Middle East, uh, he said, we have to form a parallel body to the new body of newly independent African states, the Organization of African Unity. And he founded a group called the Organization of Afro-American Unity. Uh, Baba Sekou Odinga, uh, who was one of our former political prisoners, a Black Panther, who Magdalene mentioned, uh, was actually a member of Malcolm's Organization of Afro-American Unity. And Malcolm said, Minister Malcolm said, uh, the, the abuses of the U.S. have to be brought before an international arena. So fast forward to last month, to October 2021, to this international tribunal on U.S. human rights abuses against Black, Brown, and indigenous peoples, we did just that. And we did just that, I think, with the real headline. And I don't want the, the headline to be buried a, a half hour into the show, but the headline is that the panel of independent jurors, in fact, found the US guilty of genocide. And, and I'll close just with this. It wasn't just about the activities of January 2021 that the top of the show spotlighted. It wasn't just the activities of the former president, Donald Trump. It wasn't just of recent human rights activities against black, brown, and indigenous peoples of the last years. It is a history of abuse, a history of genocide that goes from the years before the actual founding of the U.S. through to the founding of the U.S. itself through to the Jim Crow era, through to the post-Jim Crow era, through up until the verdict of just yesterday uh, of, of Rittenhouse that was mentioned. So it's a long and deep and sad history, and that one that we hope to rectify by bringing this verdict and these activities post-verdict, which again, Baba uh, Jihad will, I think, speak about in more detail, uh, to the world stage and the world arena. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Let's hear from you, brother Jihad. And uh, please uh, give a little bit of background on yourself, Aki, be, uh, before you share your perspective on the tribunal. Yes. Uh, thank you, Haji Morris Salakan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Jihad Abdul Mumit. I'm formerly a member of the Black Panther Party, formerly a political prisoner. Um, for my involvement in the Black Liberation Movement. I live in Richmond, Virginia. I am the chairperson of the National Jericho Movement, and I'm honored to be on the coordinating committee of the uh, tribunal, the 2021 International Tribunal, and of course, a member of the Spirit of Mandela Coalition. Um, I'm a playwright. Um, my wife and I, we have a uh, theater company here in Richmond. We do thematic plays. I'm a case manager uh, going into the prisons and jails to test for HIV and hepatitis and to be case management for those that are uh, impacted by those diseases to make sure that they have a doctor medication and help pay the rent and all those other reentry issues uh, coming out of prison. 
So there you go with that. Um, I'm honored to be here. Thank you, Haji Marisela Khan and, and my dear sister, Madeline Musami. I am equally uh, honored to be on the same platform with you, my dear sister. So my heartfelt greetings of Asalaamu Alaikum to you. And of course, with my comrade, uh, Matt Meyer, who I've been working with diligently every single day, accomplishing so much. So the tribunal, um, uh, Sister Musami mentioned that we're going to resuscitate. Uh, and that's exactly what we're trying to do. Uh, as, as Matt brought out, we're going, we have proven what has already been proven uh, about the genocide inflicted upon us for 400 years, Black, Brown, and Indigenous people. And the unique thing about this form of genocide, unlike the awesome, reprehensible, um, and terrible genocide inflicted upon other people throughout the world, this has went on for 400 years. It's not something that you can say it started this year and ended this year, went four years, three years, two years. We can count the number of people that, that were slaughtered. Uh, we're tracking down the war criminals. This has been historic, it's systemic, it's embedded in our system uh, that we presently live under up until this day in the United States. So therefore, unfortunately, unfortunately, it's become so normalized um, uh, that we see it and we don't see the forest for the trees that this is a, a, a process of genocide continuing in the institutions of the United States. Um, black, brown, and indigenous people are victims of colonialism. And the bedfellow of colonialism is genocide. And that's what we've been experiencing. We're still experiencing impacted and oppressed by the vestiges of colonialism as a people being subjugated uh, by another people. And that's what colonialism is. So now the illusion is that we have a participatory society through this democracy, uh, which is a facade. Not, not to ignore the progress, the relative progress that's been made in this country as the advancement of technology, uh, the right to vote, however you may perceive to be. Um, we are a country that enjoys uh, running water, flushing toilets, gadgets and trinkets, as our Haj Malik al Shabazz says, cars, spinning wheels, and, and all these other things. But as our Haj Malik al Shabazz pointed out, here we are being slaughtered in so many ways, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Uh, but it's almost likened to um, our teeth being yanked out of our mouth, but because of the Novocaine, which I don't think they use Novocaine anymore, but you know what I'm saying. But he was saying because of the pacification through the chasing of the carrot and some of us getting some of the uh, crumbs off the table and benefiting therefrom and being indoctrinated to this is a, a society that's ingratiating us uh, under that false narrative. You know, we live with it. We don't realize the blood are all running all down your jaw. And here you are uh, not recognizing it. It's almost like the quote that allegedly Harriet Tubman made. You know, she freed about 70 some slaves. Some people say 300, but nevertheless, uh, she said that I uh, was noted to have said that she could have freed a thousand more if only they knew they were slaves. So what this tribunal sought to do um, is to prove and present the narrative to assimilate all the facts that's been written about, reported on, including through your own reports, uh, Haj Maricela Khan, over the years, over the decades, actually, to bring it all into one space, vet it out, uh, um, present it in accurate format, bring the eyes of the world to look upon it, as has been led by uh, Sister Madeline Musami, and get a verdict. So we had to prove that case uh, to the American people. We had to prove that case to the jurists. And now that verdict of, of genocide was very, very important moving forward for us to realize and recognize the awesome, uh, reprehensible truth that we live under, that we are victims of genocide. Saying genocide is not just like saying we are, um, that the United States is guilty of human rights violations. That's really soft palating it um, because that word, because it's so pervasive around the world. <laughs> human rights violations are so pervasive in so many countries when governments inflicting upon their people, uh, it kind of gets uh, lost in the sauce as far as the importance and the impact of what's really being said. But when you say genocide, you know, that definitely puts you in the same category of the, of the ilk of, of Adolf Hitler, for example. And, and now the, your eyes and the light in your head, you know, opens up and say, what in the world? Yes, what in the world? So um, just to briefly, you know, I'm going to replicate everything that my dear sister, uh, uh, Maggie said and what Matt said, but um, the outcomes of this tribunal is, is, is now what's on the table. That is now what is on the table. 
So we're not just taking this this documentation, this evidence, this proof, this verdict to the United Nations in the future, which we will. It's not just taking the verdict and the information of this verdict to the State Department, which we will, inshallah. You know, but it's also utilizing it as a tool. Now we have uh, hundreds of people that's following uh, the uh, the tribunal uh, post uh, initiatives. We have uh, many, many organizations involved and many, 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 many activists involved with all different type of committee work. So as Jalil Mutakin, one of the, um, the one that called for the, not the tribunal itself, but for the um, coalition to be established when he was in prison, one statement that he made, which, which centers us right in this room right now, is that we are our own liberators. So now the question is, what are we going to do moving forward? And what are we going to do moving forward besides presenting this information, besides hopefully, inshallah, taking it to federal court, because it also is a violation of domestic law, which is 18 U.S.C. 1091. Um, and, and also international laws, Matt adequately pointed out, where we're going to try to move forward to build a people's Senate. That means we're going to utilize this information, you know, to present uh, an opportunity for people to to really embrace the concept and the reality of self-governance. Sometimes we say, say self-determination, as, uh, as Madeline said earlier, using that word, but self-governance, you know, we're giving us an opportunity. We have set the facts for those that are apolitical, those who did not understand, those of a foggy mind and didn't see the reality of what's going on. Hopefully this tribunal has set the stage right and reconnected us. And once again, using um, Sister Maggie's word, resuscitate breathe some life into the, the need for us to, to really grow this human rights movement. So that's where the point that we are at right now, and I'm gonna leave the mic open for further questions from you, but the tribunal was awesome. I salute you, uh, Sister Maggie, to your involvement from way overseas. Uh, I am, yes, yes, indeed. Uh, I am so honored to be here with you, and um, I'm open for questions moving forward. Thank you, Assalamu alaikum. Okay. I, uh... I had to deal with the heartburn of not being able to be in that space with you all in New York. At the time that the tribunal was taking place, I was in Boston for the fourth mobilization for Dr. Afia Siddiqui, but I was able, uh, by the grace and mercy of Allah and the, uh, uh, the technological know-how of uh, those within the conference uh, to be able to give testimony from my hotel room in Boston on the cases of uh, Dr. Afia Siddiqui, uh, who's been a political prisoner now for 18 years, and Imam Jamil Abdullah Al Amin, the former H. Rap Brown, who has been a political prisoner in the US for 21 years. Now, political imprisonment, that was one of the categories of the conference. What were the other categories of the conference? Um, and, and what were the counts that the U.S. was found guilty of? Do you want to take that, uh, 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 Sister Mag Magdalene? Do you want to take that question? Yes, I w uh, Yes, uh, 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 mashallah, uh, uh, shukran. I want to correct your language again. It was not a conference. I said, I, I said conference again, subhanAllah. You, What's wrong? Yes. I must, be, you, I, I must be really, really tired, man. I'm, <laughs> forgive me. Can, can the you tribunal. officially correct your language? Yes, yes. Because yes. I, 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 I take offense to the fact that it was a conference. It was a tribunal. It was a tribunal. What's wrong with me, my, my good? Please forgive me. It's like Please, it, it has been reiterated it's by the human in me. Professor Matt Understood. and by uh, Jihad, and you keep repeating yourself. Can you please? For... So, do you, do you want to say about the five counts, or should we have? Please. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, I will give you, uh, uh, you asked about it. Uh, so the counts were police racism and violence, okay. mass incarceration, political prisoners or prisoners of war, uh -huh. environmental racism and public health inequity, um, and an overarching allegation uh, to the above in terms of genocide. So that is what we had to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, and your question, uh, and I want to just reiterate for the sake of uh, public affirmation, is that it was a tribunal where 
we heard testimonies of almost 30 witnesses mm -hmm. that were not uh, um, random, but were, uh, we had uh, uh, one of the witnesses fascinated me in terms of forensic, uh, Matt, you will help me, forensic architecture of, of the, the uh, sites of uh, 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 burials, etc. Um, we had the most amazing witnesses. Uh, apart from forensic witnesses, we had witnesses of uh, mothers who spoke about how uh, the woman, I, I, I can't recall her name at the moment. Let me just try and go through my papers. But she spoke about how her child was literally killed and in, in, in front of her for having no understanding of why. Uh, 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 she, was she uh, am, am I correct or not a jihad or not? From uh, um, Côte d'Ivoire. Was it Kodiva or Konakri? Um, I'll be. It but, was the but most. It was here in the United States. Yes. Yes. In the United in the United States. Okay. And it was the most emotional experience of my life mm -hmm. of thinking. Remember, uh, I'm South African. And we have seen a, a, a Holocaust, which is disguised as apartheid, which Jews can uh, celebrate because they are Jews. Um, where children were lost and killed and their body parts came back and we had a, a, a truth and reconciliation uh, process. However, the fact that a mother sees her child killed in her presence, uh, that people have attested to death, um, was spine chilling. Yeah. Yeah. It revealed the reality that in as much as the United Nations, an entity that is based in the United States, has been unable to resolve mass murders, is irreprehensible. Incomprehensible. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. the issue that I want to raise is the following in terms of what you mentioned. Why was Sekwa Odinga in prison for more than 30 years? Why was Jihad Jalil and all of the others of the Black Panther movement? Why has the murderers of Malcolm X exonerated? Mm. Now, these are issues that we need to interrogate in terms of what is the, what is the state of justice? What is the status of justice? of the United States system of justice. Now, let me also further implore this to you. I was not allowed into the United States to exercise my duty as a chief justice. Others were not, including Marial Fanon. 
My issue is, it's not personal. It's an issue of the United States condones and accepts the killing and accepts and releases, and now I'm becoming emotional, and exonerates the murderers of Malcolm X. And we must sit back with our arms folded. No way. We're not going to do it. It can oh, keep- Correction, correction, my sister. The, these were not the murderers of Malcolm X. These were two men that were wrongfully uh, implicated and uh, it, uh, there was cover up from the FBI via COINTELPRO uh, to, to, to actually uh, keep the evidence of who the real perpetrators were hidden. So and these were two men that were wrongfully accused uh, and they were in prison for about two decades before their release. But that cloud of, uh, of you know, them, two, three. of, of them being. Three. But ma maybe, three. maybe I can, I, I can uh, uh, jump in here. Huh? Go ahead, jump uh, in. Because jump. I think, uh, <clears throat> I think there are a few things uh, to say. First of all, uh, with with due respect, and I I, I do um, I do think the points you're raising here, uh, my dear sister, are are, are so uh, uh, so important and so poignant. Uh, but just two two little things on wording, because we're all agreeing now uh, the importance of wording. So it's it's worth to say um, that Jews don't celebrate the Holocaust; now they commemorate it. Huh? Uh, so so you use the word celebrate twice, and I think that's important to correct. But also, it's to say that this case about the uh, the two uh, the two uh, exactly. assassins of, of, of Minister Malcolm X, um, you know, that were just recently exonerated, or also this week, um, it is part of uh, a system uh, that doesn't condone these murders, that doesn't uh, exonerate for these murders but that perpetrates these murders. So the U.S. becomes a, a perpetrator. And I think um, one of the issues here about these, uh, these two men uh, is, you know, what does it mean that the FBI, the federal, the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigations, sat on intentionally information about what happened to El Haj Malik El Shabazz, what happened to to Minister Malcolm X, uh, allowing two men to 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 sit in jail for decades, uh, wrongly accused, but also because the actual murderers might go free. That's part of a pattern of perpetration, not just condoning, but actually direct perpetration, uh, because right. we we know and we long believe that the FBI or its various agencies or agents, including in the New York Police Department, uh, were, were amongst those, at least at least amongst those involved in that murder. So it's, it's not celebration for Jews. It's not condonement for the U.S. It's direct perpetration. And I say these words uh, specifically to say we have, in the case of the Holocaust, uh, a, a global understanding of some kind, even though there's denialism and sometimes controversy, there's basically a global understanding. We have in the case of South Africa and apartheid, a global understanding. It took decades, it took struggle, but it's pretty clear. There's still lots of work to be done. Economic apartheid still exists. But within the U.S. and within the global perception of the U.S., there's a dirty secret. And it may not be a secret to the millions of people that I hope uh, Brother Jihad talks more about, because uh, only he can speak with authority as a Panther who served all those years in prison. Maybe not as many years as as his his brothers Sekou and uh, and Jalil. Maybe not as many years as Imam Jamil El Amin, who is still in jail. Uh, but but Jihad, you have those experiences. We want to hear about those. However. In the international arena, we know 
that even amongst those who are critical of the U.S., there is this sense that somehow there's freedom here. There's a certain amount of democracy here. Well, it's not so bad. And the, the dirty secret is that it's not just that there are a few civil rights disorders. It's not even that there are just a few human rights issues. And it's not just that assassination and murder and genocide took place four or 500 years ago against native peoples. Leonard Peltier languishes in jail today because the FBI and the U.S. government perpetrates murder and covers up the actual murderers. And so we, we look at the fact that genocide is part of the U.S. history and part of the U.S. present, and that's what needs to be looked at. And that's what I want to hear Jihad speak about. I'll say one last thing before we focus on the Panthers and focus on what will happen next. Because I, I, I want to hear, uh, you know, I, I know that uh, Baba Jihad has some information about post-tribunal actions that I wanted to speak about. But it's also useful in saying that in addition to many of the folks from Black Lives Matter, Movement for Black Lives, the Panthers, uh, the history of the Black movement in the U.S., we did also have uh, some key Native elders. We did also have some people who are in current detention camps along the U.S.-Mexican border. And, of course, we had some Puerto Rican activists, Puerto Rico being one of the last colonies of the world, and a direct colony of the U.S. And in Puerto Rico's case, we had political prisoners, we had human rights experts, and we had others who said the continuation of Puerto Rican colonialism, which is an external and an internal affair, is, as Maggie and others have said, uh, maybe the most obvious uh, uh, sister of genocidal policies uh, and human rights abuses. So... Thank you for those clarifications. Okay. Um, unfortunately, we are over time. And we got off to a late start because of the difficulties that I was having trying to find your bios. Um, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to continue this conversation later. What I want to do is give my brother Jihad the last word. Uh, uh, brother Jihad, you've got uh, two minutes, inshallah ta'ala, to just share whatever thoughts you want uh, to share on uh, the issues that have been raised or if, if there's something important that we haven't touched on for you to be able to touch on that. Uh, and I get, you have my promise. I'm going to have all three of you back so that we can continue this conversation on the tribunal. I want to talk more about the, the history of the tribunal, you know, and uh, you know, what, how often it takes place. Is it yearly? Is it semi annually? You know, Inshallah ta'ala, we're going to come back and have a continued conversation on that. But for now, two minutes, Brother Jihad. You have the Okay. Last. Yes, indeed. Bismillah. So um, the, you had asked a question, uh, Haji Morris Elakan, about the other charges and why was it so. It was just police brutality and violence against black and brown indigenous uh, people, mass incarceration, uh, the fact that we have freedom fighters, uh, political prisoners, environmental racism and public health disparities. And the reason we incorporated all of these uh, elements because they all make up the whole picture and package of genocide uh, and, 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 and show how systemic and how embedded and infused it is into our society and how rounded it is, how it impacts every vestige of our life. And so we felt it very important to people to see that whole picture. A lot of times you just think about the police killings, which is definitely awesome and real uh, and reprehensible. And horrendous, you know, but we're also being impacted by, you know, historical trauma, lack of access to medical health care, um, mental health illnesses um, that's being left addressed post uh, slavery uh, syndrome, as they call it, as such environmental racism or something is happening in the environment where, as our environment is eroded by the vestiges of capitalism and imperialism, poor and oppressed people, black, brown, indigenous people are the most impacted by this as it's also systemic and, and and, and, and principle to the charge of genocide. That's the answer to that question. Uh, yes, we, we, are, we are grateful that the fact that we will be called back. There's a lot more that I know all three of us can uh, uh, introduce into this picture. So I wanna leave it there just so you can make sure that that question is answered. Uh, for your listeners, the, yes, we are moving forward with the Senate, building a people's Senate. It is a national slash international initiative. We need the international support. And right now, we're looking through the eyes of our sister, uh, Madeline Musami, 
you know, but also looking forward to a broader scope of building that international solidarity. So those are some of the things we look forward to speaking about when we come back. Great. Magdalene Mosami, Matt Myers, Jihad Abdul Mumit, I want to uh, express on behalf of not only myself, uh, but uh, the listeners and viewers of today's broadcast, uh, a hearty thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for the commitment that you bring uh, to the table of this very important struggle. And uh, inshallah, God willing, we look forward to having you back uh, soon uh, to continue this conversation. Uh, and again, I apologize for the mishap uh, with the late start we got off to me misplacing the, the, the bios. We're going to find them and we're going to post your full bios, inshallah ta'ala, so folks can just get a sense of, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the capacity that was brought to the table for this conversation today. With that said, peace be unto you all. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum 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 wa al